the repair we have now, you would consider either chip paint or peeling paint. Bottom line is the surface of that paint is all marred or stepped. And that's kind of how I want you to think of it. Yes, steps in your house. And when you walk down a step, there's a definite drop off from one level to another level. What we have to do in this repair is we have to sand this area so instead of a step, it's more like a ramp. A ramp's a little bit more gradual and we need to sand these away and make it more like a ramp. It might be a little bit lower, but hopefully it's going to be so gradual, once we put paint on it, you're not going to be able to see it. The very first step, just like in every other repair, we always clean the area. A little bit of quick clean, and we clean it. For this repair, I'm not going to do the whole stick. I'm going to do, you know, maybe 13 inches, 14 inches. So you would never do this in real life, but that's pretty much where I'm going to go to. And when I start painting and sanding, I want you to see an area after the painting so you know that this side's done, this side hasn't been touched. So the defect pretty much runs right along that ridge and we're going to stop there. It's clean. Now what we're going to need to do is sand it. And I picked a pretty aggressive sandpaper. It's 220 grit. And I'm going to sand this area a little bit on camera and a little bit off camera. I'm going to do it on camera just so you see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to do it off camera, finish it, and then we'll come back. So it's just 220 grit. Just going to sand in the direction of the molding. And I, I really don't care at this point if I go through the color into the raw wood because I have primer here, I have paint here, and we're going to replace the paint if need be. Just getting kind of rid of the dust, sanding dust, just to see how smooth we are. And we're actually pretty good, maybe right here a little bit more. Now, 220 grit scratches, it's a pretty hard scratch to have to cover up with paint or primer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually switch to 320 grit. And what we're really doing is making those 220 grit scratches, which are pretty deep. We're going to make them more look like 320 scratches, which are a little bit easier to cover with primer and paint. I'll get this cleaned up and we'll be ready to start priming. Right. And what you could see is we cleaned up all of the sanding dust. You could see that all of the defects, all of the chipping has been removed. And the way we removed it is, let's say that finishes maybe three or four mils thick. We sand it off maybe a mil and a half and we sand it off all of that chipping. So now we're down to a primer coat but it's smooth. So what we'll do now is seal this or prime this a little bit more, make sure it's sand it well and smooth, and then put on a top coat. Give the primer a quick shake, quick spray, and we're ready to go. going to be spraying all the way down to where I cut.
We'll let that first coat dry. We'll feel if it's rough at all. If it's rough at all, we'll probably use the back of the sandpaper to smooth it out, and then we'll be ready to put on a white top coat. Okay, our first coat of primer is dry. It might be a little bit dusty. We're just gonna take again the back of the sandpaper, run that over the area. You can see that even the back took off a little bit of the paint. Wipe off the dust, and now we're ready for a white top coat. We're gonna spray it basically the same way. Because there's no real edges, because we're doing it to a certain point, we're not gonna have to use the blender flow out. We're just gonna give it a nice even coat of white top coat. very easy to get happy fingers and keep spraying, but just get that one coat down and let it dry. Okay, that coat of white top coat is now dry. Feels nice and smooth. We're pretty much done. You can see as I rotate that, there's really no flaws at all in it. So we changed all those little steps, all those little chips, kind of more into a ramp, got rid of them and then put a little primer on there to build the finish and a little bit of white top coat. Since it is molding, molding usually doesn't take a whole lot of abuse. I don't even know if I would put a clear satin on there. It looks pretty flawless now. Sometimes uh, you try to overwork a, a touch up. It's, it's looking good and it's like, let me do this one more thing and that's usually when you mess up. So we're gonna leave it just like that Again, we did it to this point where I made a cut in the, the molding. So all of this is pretty much pristine and ready to be used.